Okay, we're going to shift uh, momentarily from the corporate focus to uh, one of the groups that actually has um, really organized a lot of the efforts, uh, both on the ground and, and, and obviously the, from here. The American Red Cross uh, was very visible already by the time we were there in China six weeks uh, after the incident. And uh, Gail McGovern actually was on a similar, uh, sh I don't know, a week or two One weeks week. into the job? One week. One week into the job, uh, the head of the American Red Cross, when she went over, uh, and so David uh, uh, and the whole team has done a, a tremendous job in working with the International Red Cross and working with the private sector and, of course, the government. So, David, we welcome you. He's the Senior Vice President of the International Services for the American Red Cross. Look forward to your comments today. Thank you, Myron, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, in talking about partnership, uh, we, we tend to look at it as partners in the U.S. and partners in China. And let's start in the U.S. and critical partners, obviously, are our donors. Um, without support from our donors, we can't not provide the assistance that is so critically needed in China and really throughout the world. Um, in the case of our U.S. donors, um, the response has been uh, profound. Uh, since the tsunami, this is the, the largest uh, response for an international disaster. Uh, we have received over $50 million uh, in donations from the public. Approximately 40% of that is from corporations and foundations. Uh, many of the corporations have set up uh, online giving programs for their employees. Uh, as you heard, uh, many of them will provide matching uh, donations given by their employees. So very quickly following the China disaster, we reached out to our corporate partners many of whom, of course, had significant interest in supporting the Chinese people, and we did generate a very robust response uh, from our donors. Also partnering with the U.S. government, as you've heard, we regularly partner with the U.S. government, the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance, immediately following disasters uh, to provide assistance with the support of the U.S. government. Turning to China, and really it's critically important uh, in China as well as elsewhere following the disaster to have local partners. Uh, as you design your relief and your recovery operations, uh, and I think Ellen touched upon this, you really need to understand what the community wants. Uh, for those of us in, um, unfortunately, the disaster business, um, we, we see very, uh, a, a good deal of examples of what I call dump and run assistance. Uh, in the tsunami affected countries, you, you go to fishing villages and you see brand new fishing boats sitting on the shore unused. Why? Because no one took the time, and it is troublesome, to go to the community and ask them, what do you need? Because frankly, we have seen this in the tsunami, and Myron talked about lessons learned. If you provide people with materials that they do not need, they will not use them. So very quickly, you need to engage the local community and ask them, what do you need? What is culturally appropriate and what is not culturally appropriate? Another partner critical in the, both the relief as well as the recovery phase in China is, of course, the Chinese government. Uh, as we look to our role uh, in recovery operations, we need to engage with the Chinese government. We want them as a partner. Frankly, as we look to, and I'll talk in a minute about uh, engaging in reconstruction of homes, we want the Chinese government to be a partner financially as well as technically with our operations and those operations of the Red Cross Society of China. The third partner, of course, is critical, is someone to implement assistance through. Many of the corporations, they have employees, they have local presence, the way we in the American Red Cross work ordinarily is we partner with the local Red Cross or Red Crescent Society. In the case of China, the Red Cross Society of China and the American Red Cross have a partnership going back over 100 years. In fact, uh, in preparing for the, the trip to China at the end of June, we, we did some research and we found that the Red Cross Society of China was established in 1904. Two years later, President Teddy Roosevelt wrote a letter to the then head of the uh, American Red Cross and said, there is a famine in China, can you please provide assistance? And so in what was our, our then first international response following the departure of our founder, Clara Barton, we provided what is today about $7 million of assistance following the famine in China in 1906. That very same year, the Chinese Red Cross provided financial assistance to the American Red Cross 
following the earthquake in San Francisco. And the decades in between really are filled with examples of mutual assistance. This is not one-way assistance. This is very much a two-way partnership, and that is ver very important from, the, uh, from both Red Cross societies. In fact, just last week, the Chinese Red Cross gave us a significant cash donation towards our ongoing hurricane uh, relief operations in Texas. So those are examples of the need for partnership. What are we doing with these funds that we've collected? Uh, within 72 hours of the earthquake striking, we wired $10 million to the International Federation, which was used to purchase relief supplies such as blankets, cots, and to assist the over 150,000 volunteers and staff of the Red Cross Society of China who went into the quake zone. They were the implementers. We were the funders for $10 million in 72 hours. We've also spent $4 million in reestablishing uh, what we call the cold chain to allow vaccinations uh, to occur in the quake-affected zone. Vac vaccines often require refrigeration, so we've spent money there. As we look into the three-year reconstruction effort, the recovery effort, the single greatest need is housing. In that quake, in a matter of minutes, five million people were rendered homeless. Their homes were destroyed. Uh, just to give you a frame of reference, because it's hard to grasp numbers, uh, for those of you from the Washington, D.C. area, the metropolitan area is about 5.3 million. So if you picture everyone in Washington, D.C., in the city, as well as the suburbs of Bethesda, Tyson's Corner, um, picture them homeless, and picture the burden on the Chinese government and the Chinese Red Cross to shelter them. Uh, it, it really was an amazing uh, experience, and I've been through a number of uh, disaster scenes. Uh, the number of people who were already in not just tents, but what we call transitional shelters was staggering, a real credit to the efforts of the Chinese government and Chinese Red Cross. So as we look in the future, we will spend the balance of our money largely in reconstruction of people's homes in partnership with the government. And then we also look at areas to provide assistance to those people who are in transitional shelters today that lack heat, because of course the winter is coming. And finally, uh, we will partner with the Chinese Red Cross to help them build up their capacity, both resources, technical and human, to respond to future disasters, whether they are typhoons or earthquakes or other sorts of disasters. Uh, unfortunately, here in America, as we know, uh, we have a lot of experience with natural disasters. And that is, uh, while tragic that we are forced to have that experience, it is valuable and we can provide assistance to the Chinese Red Cross. So that is our, our vision of the next three years. Thank you.